<laughs> Mwahahahaha! <laughs> Happy Halloween! Around this time of year, I like to watch classic horror films. Typically, the 1920s to the 1960s is my preferred range, although I've seen numerous films outside of that window. Whether it be silent horror films like The Phantom of the Opera and The Man Who Laughs, classic gothic horror films like Dracula and Frankenstein, atomic age horror films like The Day the Earth Stood Still and Forbidden Planet, psychological horror films like Psycho and the Birds, I enjoy the experience. In an ideal horror film, the audience's mood is manipulated by the atmosphere, and thought-provoking ideas or concepts are introduced to challenge the audience. If a film can make the most out of these two elements, then terror could be instilled in the audience without a single drop of blood, a jump scare, or gruesome imagery. But as time went on, and horror films had to be increasingly shocking, I believe the atmosphere and interesting ideas began to take a back seat. In my opinion, the greatest horror films of the first half of the 20th century were the best examples of these concepts. But no other film captures these concepts as concisely and effectively as Universal's 1932 film, The Old Dark House. This is D.E.S. Before we talk about the film, it is important to understand the background behind it. By 1932, the film industry had been in the early years of the transition from silent to sound film. Beginning with an era of landmark films including The Jazz Singer and Steamboat Willie, the industry was adapting to a new way of filmmaking. This meant for Universal Pictures, the most prolific horror movie machine, horror would have to evolve with the advent of sound. During the silent age, Universal produced large budget adaptations of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Phantom of the Opera, and more. But the addition of sound led to more immersive and suspenseful filmmaking. Early sound horror films from Universal, like 1931's Dracula, 1931's Frankenstein, and 1932's The Mummy would show this. Their use of sound design and dialogue showed how much more captivating horror films can be with sound. During this horror film boom, many of the principles, elements, and iconic characters of the genre were being created. All of these would be continued, repeated, remade, and remembered for decades after, and until the present day. However, one film is seemingly ignored during this era, 1932's The Old Dark House. I believe this to be a shame, as it is my belief that it is not only an influential film for the horror genre, but also an excellent film all around. I'll tell you all about it as we go through the movie chronologically. With that all being said, let's begin. Before we start the movie, I'll pose a question to you. Have you ever seen a film where a group of young people find a house in the middle of nowhere and bad things happen? This concept has been used to the point of satire over the decades since its inception. The Cabin in the Woods scenario has become a well-known horror cliché. Films like The Evil Dead and Friday the 13th are famous examples of this idea. But where did this concept come from? I believe it to be The Old Dark House. It may seem like a stretch, but the plot is highly similar to other Cabin in the Woods movies. You can broadly explain the story as a group of travelers find a house in the middle of nowhere to take shelter from a storm, but bad things start to happen as the night goes on. This is the earliest film that I have found that clearly displays this type of story, and it is in my belief that one of the most iconic horror film trends started here. The film opens with a car driving through a terrible storm. Since this is an early sound horror film, there is no musical score. This storm serves as the film's soundtrack. I believe it makes the film more atmospheric and immerses you into the setting more effectively than if there were a consistent score. It is in this first scene where we meet our travelers, husband and wife Philip and Margaret Waverton and their friend Roger Pendrel. They're lost in the Welsh countryside on a dark night. The road is blocked off by a landslide and the group is trapped on both ends of the road. They spot a large house and drive there. Upon arriving, they knock on the door and are greeted by... A creepy butler named Morgan. He's played by Boris Karloff, recently famous for his portrayal of Frankenstein's monster. In this film, he plays a similar role, as a large, staggering mute. Throughout the film, Morgan has a sinister presence that only grows more intense as the film continues. After the travelers are let inside, we are introduced to Horace Femme, an anxious man who is frightened by everything. The travelers convince Horace to let them stay the night, and he agrees. One great aspect of the film is the attention given to each character. Each of the individuals in the house has a distinct personality and visual design. Morgan is large, moves in a stiff fashion, and always has a piercing gaze. Horace is thin, always has a curl in his brow, has a pompous composure, and a dark shadow around his eyes, giving his face a skeletal appearance. Another interesting detail about the character design is shown by the character's outfits. The individuals in the house all wear black, while the travelers wear lighter colored clothes. This proves to further distinguish their designs, which was more difficult because of the black and white image of the film. 
After allowing them to stay, Horace invites the travelers to have a drink. I like you. He also tells the travelers that Morgan can become dangerous when he drinks. Another character is introduced, the sister of Horace, Rebecca Femme. She is nearly deaf, so she speaks loudly. She is highly resistant to the guests staying, but acquiesces when told there is no other option for them. While Rebecca takes Margaret to her room to change out of her wet clothes, she tells her about the Femme family and their wicked ways. As she continues to talk about her sinful family, the camera shows Rebecca's face through a distorted mirror, perfectly accompanying her strange speech. And then she warns Margaret about her supposed wickedness. That's fine stuff, but it'll rot. That's finer stuff still, but it'll rot too in time. Don't! How dare you! After being frightened by this encounter, Margaret leaves and goes back to the central room. Shut up! Dinner is served, in a scene that may initially appear completely innocuous to the film's plot, but I believe the scene serves to characterize our cast in a wordless manner. As the camera goes around the table, we are shown each individual's personality just from the way they eat. Horace eats in a careful and slow fashion. Rebecca eats very quickly and takes a lot of food. Our travelers eat a conservative portion each. But of course, they each have potatoes. Have a potato. I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's important to say just how well written the dialogue is. This script can be appropriately hilarious, suspenseful, or sinister depending on the need of the scene. It's extremely rare that a horror film can balance comedy and fright so seamlessly. During the meal, there's a knock at the door. Morgan opens it, and two more travelers with the same predicament enter. The boisterous Sir William Porterhouse, and a chorus girl named Gladys Duquesne. After dinner, the travelers and Horace converse by the fireplace. During the conversation, we see a rift forming between Porterhouse and Duquesne. This turn in the discussion leads to Duquesne and Pendrel leaving the house to get whiskey from his car. Right after they leave, the electric lights go out in the house, and Rebecca tells Horace to retrieve a lamp from the top floor. Horace convinces Philip Waverton to get it because he is frightened of what inhabits the top floor. He gets the lamp but hears a mysterious voice. He looks to investigate the matter but is confronted by Morgan, now drunk. They get into a fight which ends with Philip throwing the lamp at Morgan. Causing him to pass out. During this altercation, Pendrel and Perkins are in the car, deciding to stay there for a bit. During the stay, they fall in love, and it's revealed that Perkins and Porterhouse are only platonic friends, allowing her to marry Pendrel. They re-enter the house and announce this to Porterhouse. Philip and Margaret find the source of the mysterious voice, the Femme's 102-year-old father, Sir Roderick Femme. While there, he gives a chilling backstory of the house and his family. This is an unlucky house. Two of my children died when they were 20, and then... Other things happened. Madness came. He also warns of his eldest son, Saul. He is locked up on the top floor, but he wants to escape and burn the house down. Rebecca yells out that Morgan has let Saul out. Philip and Margaret lock Sir Roderick in his room, and Horace locks himself in as well. They meet everyone at the bottom of the stairs. Morgan appears and charges towards Margaret. The three men grab him and take him into the kitchen. Roger goes back to the central room and locks Perkins and Margaret in a closet. He's the only one in the room, but not for long. I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie, so I'll leave it on a cliffhanger. There's a lot more in this film I didn't mention. I just wanted to give you the main story beats and detail certain things that I believe would enhance your viewing of the movie. While writing this script, I've increasingly pondered the cultural impact yet lack of ubiquity that the old dark house has created. Perhaps the film was just lost in the shuffle of the classic era of horror. It didn't help that it was sandwiched in between Universal's The Mummy and The Invisible Man, which were extremely influential films. But whether or not it's as well known as Universal's other horror films, The Old Dark House deserves to sit among them for its impact on the horror genre. I always come back to this film for its brilliant direction, captivating atmosphere, excellent performances, well-written script, and suspenseful story. It has become an annual tradition for me to watch this film every Halloween season, and it gets better every year. Thank you for watching this spooky video essay. Please make sure to tell me in the comments about other works of art that I should talk about, or just leave a comment about anything. I'm always up for having a discussion. If you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel, and if you'd like, you can hit the notification bell or leave a like. Anyways, that's all for this video, and thank you so much for watching.